Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the HG Iron Blood Orphans Regin Lays Julia. So Regin Lays Julia here is the latest and what is probably going to be the last, I guess, of the kind of progression of the Grays type mobile suit uh, that first made its appearance in the very first episode, if I remember correctly. It's the first or second episode anyway. That the uh, Grays standard type first appeared and then we've gone through different iterations and then it kind of evolved into the Regin Lays, which I guess is a little bit different, but uh, still kind of same general kind of shape and type sort of. But this one's taking on a much, much different shape. Uh, quite, a, a, quite a different shape here, even from the Regin Lays, the original Regin Lays. This one obviously going to be looking very, very different. I mean, if you kind of, if you squint your eyes in some areas, you can still very clearly, plainly see like the original Regin Lays, especially the legs. Like this area of the legs here is pretty much exactly the same. But then you have this whole extra bit added down here, and you have this whole extra bit added on the side. The side skirts and the front skirts are all much more fleshed out. There's a lot more going on there. Uh, even the front armor of the torso is a little bit more. It's got a whole lot more torso armor going out the back. Uh, it's got these big, huge binders on the top of the shoulders there as well. It's just a very different and very unique design. Overall, really, really fun kit to build because of that. Because, uh, you know, building different versions of the Greys and all of that, uh, over time, they do, they're all, I mean, relatively similar, right? But this one was very, very different. And even from just mobile suits in general, just this kit was a very different type of build. So that was pretty nice. Certain aspects of it, I mean, are sort of reminiscent to more, like, UC Xeon type mobile suits in a way. But uh, anyway, just really fun, really unique kit. The color, not really too big of a fan of the colors. They're kind of okay. I, I think I'll I'll change up the colors a bit. Uh, the thing that I think I dislike the most about this kit, though, has got to be those hands, those hook hands. And one thing that I really wanted to incorporate into this review, like as I was building the kit and thinking about this kit, I really wanted to insert a clip from the Andy Milanakis show, but I really just can't be bothered going through to find it. I can't find it on YouTube. And I would have to like download the whole series and look through the entire series looking for like a one, two second clip of this part I remember from the show when Andy Milanakis is dressed as a pirate and eating cereal uh, with his hook hand. He's like, I eat it up with me little hook hand. I don't know, but so just imagine that that clip of, if you guys are aware of that show, or if you ever watched that show, imagine that clip inserted into this review and uh I just think, yeah, that would have been funny, but I really just couldn't be bothered finding it. So, anyway, let's talk about some of the uh, articulation and uh, stuff about this kit here, shall we? Just first want to say that, yeah, it, uh, I have it displayed here on its stand because obviously it can't stand up on its own with these blade feet. Uh, it can stand on its own, though, but that's a kind of different accessory thing I'm going to go over here in just a bit. Just as, This is like just the mobile suit as it generally appears, so that's why I wanted to show it to you guys like this first. So here on the head, uh, we've got that sticker there underneath, that yellow one, and then the sticker here on the side of the head, it's kind of like a, a yellow triangle-ish shape, then this gray part of the head in there too is part of the same sticker, so it kind of goes around this, this white mustache part off the side, these like white whisker things going way off. Really cool aspect of the design. Uh, the general, like the lower shape of the head is really similar to the original Regin Lays, but and this top part and this whole like, front part kind of looks like the regular Grays kind of type head. But then the addition of this white part really sets it apart. Uh, the torso itself as well, you can see, is very long. So it's got this part here going really far out to the back. With some thrusters there, thrusters there, thruster underneath there, thrusters there. So it's just got loads and loads of thrusters there. It looks really cool. Uh, in flying poses. We'll get back to that in a bit here. Uh, up in top of the torso, uh, I guess the head I should show you, goes up really far actually, nice and far to there, and then down to there, so you have a nice movement there for the head. Uh, these bits here on the shoulder are just on a ball joint, so those can move around, mostly just rotate, but you can kind of change the angle of them uh, a little bit just based on this ball joint, so pretty nice detail there. This is uh, kind of the biggest color app sticker that we have for this, just that gray sticker that just, it's just one big sticker that folds over this part there for that gray part. That's uh, understandable. 
I wouldn't expect them to make that a separate gray piece. But then this whole gray part of the shoulder there also comes up like that, like a normal piece of shoulder armor like the original version lays. So then you can bring the shoulder up nice and far, the arm nice and far I should say, like that, and then just regular arm movement, rotation at the top, double joint here for a pretty full bend. And then the way that the forearm actually, or like the wrist plugs into the arm is a little bit different from the original Regin Lays. The original Regin Lays was more of just like a ball joint. So you can see this socket is the same here, but on the original Regin Lays, this is a ball, uh, polycap, uh, sorry, a ball joint, but on this one, it's just a peg, it just pegs into there. I find that that makes it more secure. Uh, obviously you don't have like any bending there, but I had actually had a problem with the original Regin Lays that it uh, came out very often, so this is better, it doesn't come out as much, so you can get some rotation there. And the claw is just like that, it's just closed. There is no open claw, I don't really know what I would really do if it came with another set of like open claw hands. Um, they wouldn't really look that cool posed, but they just don't really look cool in any way, shape, or form, so <laughs> just kind of have to go with those. Here in the torso midsection, we have the same as usual. Rotation here for a really nice uh, crunch back and a forward there. And then, of course, some rotation and bending there just at the polycat ball joint there in the center of the waist. But with so much kind of stuff going on here, it's kind of hard to get a lot of movement around there. Should be fine. Like for doing some poses, you can get some really nice movement there like that. Uh, the front skirts are just kind of all part of the side skirt. The side skirt just kind of wraps around to the front. Let me just take this off because it's just falling off. So I really, really like the design of these uh, side slash front skirt pieces. Uh, this part, which is like actually for the side, is just a pegged on part there. It doesn't move at all, but it's just like a separate part. So nice that we have these uh, gray thrusters there molded on. It's just pegs onto the side here on this polycap or on this ball joint. I keep saying polycat when I wanting to say ball joint. Anyway, uh, the back skirt does also move. It's pretty rare for an HG. There you can see that yellow sticker up underneath there. Uh, this uh, has a thruster underneath here as well, which is on a ball joint, so you can actually move that around a little bit if you want. It's not really too much use to that. Kind of just need to just set it straight like that. Uh, then for the legs, again, just a standard movement here. They're going to rotate at the top and come up to there, but then in the knee, if I can keep the arm from coming off there, thank you. Uh, the knee is here, but that doesn't really move because this binder on the side of the legs is plugged in here at the top and then here at the bottom, so that does not allow you to bend the knee at all. I guess what you could do is take that off and then you can bend the knee like that, like a normal leg, and this won't plug into that joint. That's actually at the ankle joint there of the leg. Uh, so then you can't actually plug that back in, but then what you could do is just have this moving like this. Excuse me a minute. <clears throat> but yeah, as you're seeing, because that front skirt is molded onto the side skirt, you can't really move it up all that much because it's just moving this whole thing up and then it's just going to kind of like come off. So anyway, you can bend that knee if you take these things apart, but it doesn't really... Then you have just this thing and it's obvious that something's missing from there. Uh, so I just want to show this to you here because... Let's see... Alright, so here you can see this is basically like the Regin Lay's leg, and then here where you would attach the foot on is where you're just attaching this whole lower section here. So this uh, just plugs onto there where you normally attach the foot, and then that's you have all this thing added. Alright, so about this part at the foot, uh, you have a little bit of bend here, and then this back part also bends a little bit like that. Yeah, again, some thrusters underneath there. This blade part, you can't move at all, but it ha you can set it either there or in this angle here. That's actually for like when it's standing later, you need to just set that back like that. Uh, this is just kind of the regular angle you're going to have it set at like that. Uh, so aside from the stand, we do have a couple other accessories here. We have just regular feet for this kit, so I'll show you how to put these on in a second, but these are like for... Uh, this is kind of it's standing feet, but in a flying position, not standing. And then we also have a set of feet for like actually standing. So you'll have these on uh, for if you want to have the kid just standing up, uh, like showing these feet, but up on a base. Here, if you want to have it actually standing on the feet.
Then we have the Julian swords. So these just attach onto the forearms. We got two of these. This tip of the part here is actually supposed to be yellow. And I'm kind of surprised we didn't get stickers for that. Seems like something Bandai would just give you a sticker for, but we didn't, so not really a big deal. I wouldn't really like them anyway, but uh, that's those, just very simple. And then we do also have the uh, whip version of these. So you can just take this off, put this one in, and then this one will bend like this at the joints there. So you can bend that to make your whip sword like that and then yeah this just plugs onto the arm here like that pretty simple and that's pretty much it for the accessories but one thing that you do get with this kit is we get a lot of extra parts and that's just extra parts left over from the Regin Lace kits and some of them are uh, worth keeping because like here we have the hands for the Regin Lace so if you wanted to have this kit actually holding any di other different weapons I think you could probably hold some stuff here in the hook hands they look like they probably I uh, can hold some stuff, I haven't tried it yet. But, one thing you can do if you don't really like those hook hands, you can just use the regular Regin Lay's hands, which I don't particularly like either, but you can use them like that. And you can just have the regular hands on there if you want, so that's included with the kit. So that's nice, and then, in case you're wondering if you can use, in case you're wondering if you can use these with the regular Regin Lay's, yes, or if you can use these with the Regin Lay's hands on this kit, Yes, you can. They just plug on the same way like that. So that's pretty nice. So overall, I have to say the kind of engineering, the construction of this kit is all really nice. The color separation is pretty good. The amount of stickers on there is really, really quite minimal. Uh, one of Another just complaint though I do have about the articulation, like all the articulation is there, but I just didn't really notice this, I guess, about the design before. And that's just like the fact that those binders on the side of the legs really, really inhibit the articulation of giving you basically any bend in the knees or ankles or anything at all. Those, those legs are pretty much just one straight thing that's just stuck there uh, in like one pose. And you can kind of chain, you can kind of tweak the angle at some points a little bit, but that really really hinders your articulation. I, I get like the whole point of this mobile suit is just like to go really really fast and just cut stuff and so in that sense you don't really need like a, I guess a lot more like articulate. I don't really know I guess in space why you would really need articulation in knees anyway but <laughs> I guess uh, anyway I just don't really care for that too much. I, I wish that this actually did have more articulation there. I guess one thing that you can do, of course, is uh, put on the actual regular feet. Which, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll like it better when I just have the kind of claw feet on there and kind of transform it sort of in a way. Uh, we'll see. But that's just something there I just wanted to point out. It's, it's, I just didn't really like that about the legs. Alright, so let's talk about transforming the feet. So here is, uh, again, just the flat foot. I'm going to put this one on first. Uh, I should mention that this one does have some articulation. You can actually bend that sort of a little bit at the ankle up underneath the foot. It's going to look like that just for the flat standing foot. So what we need to do is pull this part uh, from that ankle joint there, remove this white part on the front. Again, just basically pull off that part that I showed you before. And then we're just going to put this foot on there like a regular Regin Lay's foot, basically. It looks pretty stupid on there. This part that we took off, we're going to put it back onto that part and then set this off the back like that. So here you can see, standing with those flat feet, it's going to be looking a little bit silly with all this stuff coming off the back and you're, you're kind of supposed to set these up uh, like that and sort of like actually supposed to help it stand. But uh, yeah, that's kind of silly. Luckily, we do have the different feet options. If you really wanted to have these, you can just switch them on to these feet for just the flying ones. These ones have like a little kind of thruster detail underneath, so I think these will be a little bit better. So yeah, the nice thing about these feet and like these these flying hook feet, the ones that aren't flat, um, are okay. They're definitely better than the flat ones. They're, I mean, just in their overall shape. I mean, they're not the worst feet out there. Uh, and the nice thing is that they do at, they do allow you to have some more articulation there in the legs, being able to bend that knee. You can set that whole binder part with that whole big, huge back foot club thing part off to the back. Um, but, yeah, yeah, again, I don't know, it's just kind of okay. I don't know. <laughs> it's, 
I, I still doubt that most people are going to use these. I imagine these uh, foot parts, like the claw foot parts for this kit, are probably just going to be going into everyone's uh, scrap bin, I'd imagine. And uh, we're probably just going to be using just the legs just as they normally are. Uh, just another thing to mention here, as you're seeing that uh, green piece of the base, I complained about that in the unboxing video, and I still think it's just kind of unfortunate that they had to uh, make that extra piece, uh, extension piece of the base in green. It's a little bit distracting, I guess, but it's really not, I think, it's not that bad, uh, just because you have this really crazy, big, huge, crazy design, green and white mobile suit on there, and you're really not going to notice the base all that much. And it's, it would be really easy to just get a can of just black spray paint or something and just paint that if you really wanted to or just you know paint the whole thing whatever color you want to. So not really the worst thing in the world. Uh, and even if you don't paint, I really don't think it's something that's really going to bother you all that much. But ultimately, besides all my nagging about the lack of articulation in the legs, you can still do some cool poses. So illustrated here, I think uh, kind of similar to the Gunnabartos Lupus Rex where I really enjoyed like the wire tail and the extra uh, extension of the extra mechanical arms, the sub-arms built into the arms, just things like that that kind of add uh, to the dynamic look of the kit. Uh, these swords definitely do a lot of that. So you have this kind of very angular kit. It's just kind of very all these little lines and everything. And then you have uh, the curved uh, whip swords, and that definitely gives you kind of a little bit extra boost of dynamic look to the kit. So those are pretty cool. I gotta say, not sure about painting those. Uh, when you're painting those, I would use a uh, primer surfacer. From what I understand, for parts that are going to be kind of a little bit bendy, a primer surfacer compared to just a regular normal surfacer uh, will be a little bit stronger just for things that are going to be bending like that. The thing is that it just it's a little bit harder to spray. You have to get the mixture a little bit differently. Anyway, I uh, won't get really too much into that. But uh, if you are going to be painting those, uh, of course bent parts, just be careful because when you bend that uh, after painting then it is going to chip the paint, probably, but unless you take the necessary steps, so uh, just uh, something out there, but for those people who paint they're probably well aware of that, so uh, yeah, like I said, won't really get too much into it. Overall, it's a cool kit. There's things about this that uh, whenever I get around to painting this kit, I'll definitely change, I'll definitely change those hands, and not for the Reginald Lady's hands, I'll try to put some normal hands on there, uh, most likely. I'm not really sure because I'll have to modify that just because of the way those hands work. Uh, I'll just have to set a polycap or something into the hands or something anyway. Also, as much as I have just been going on about how much I like these swords and how much I think they do add to the kit, uh, I probably won't end up actually ever using them. I'll probably switch to some other sort of standard sort of rifle weapon or something, I suppose. That maybe sounds a little bit boring, I guess, but uh, I don't know. We'll see when it comes to to that time. So there's definitely a few, a few things about this kit that I would like to change for my own personal build of this, but uh, we'll see when that time comes. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions or comments about this kit, uh, you can leave those down below. Hopefully I covered most of everything. Overall, it's a really nice kit. It's going to be one of those things that uh, is going to appeal to some people and for other people it's just going to be like, what? No, thanks. Uh, so it's a pretty unique design and that's something that has just been true for a lot of the HD uh, or just a lot of the Iron Blood Orphans designs in general. So this one I think is pretty cool and I'm looking forward to painting this eventually. So we'll see you guys then. Anyway, thanks again for watching and bye bye.